Welcome to Edgelution 2.0. Edgelution was originally created as an answer to the COVID-19 pandemic. When the world went remote and students lost their opportunity to be in the classroom. To help prevent students from falling behind, Edgelution filled the gap for those who didn't have Wi-Fi or technology. Edgelution has supported the community for over two years, filling the educational divide through equity and access, ensuring that all students have a fair chance to learn and succeed in life. Our host is Ms. Pia Rosa, a Bronx-born and raised educator with a heart for her community. Let's start the show. Hey there, world travelers. Come and take a trip with me. Where do you think we're going? Can you take a guess? Welcome to Loose Gravel, the travel show, where we explore various countries and their cultures. This program is brought to you by BronxNet, and I'm your host, Miss Merville. As a global citizen, it is your responsibility to be open-minded to different cultures and customs different from your own. It's important to also know about social and environmental issues that occur in the world. This way you can understand all that makes people unique, as well as how they are affected by the environment. Each country can get new ideas and strategies from how different nations deal with a problem. Last time we introduced you to the country, Indonesia. We learned that it's located in Asia, it's made up of islands, and has very interesting animals and attractions. We even learned about Indonesian art techniques and popular foods and dishes. On this episode, we will discover more about Indonesia by exploring geographical features like volcanoes. Here's our map of Indonesia again. What do you think those black mountain symbols represent? Do you think it might be a part of today's focus? Let's keep going to see if you're correct. Key vocabulary to look out for. Good readers look out for context clues to help them gain meaning of an unknown word. Here are some of the words that you're going to discover today. Active, dormant, earthquake, ecosystem, erupt, extinct, geographical feature, landform, massive, tectonic plates, ring of fire, volcanoes. Keep an eye out for these words. What is a geographical feature? Geographical features are features of the earth and its ecosystems, a community of living things living in their non-living environments. Some examples of an ecosystem are the desert, rainforest, the ocean, tundra, and more. You may have also heard of the word landforms. Landforms are features of the Earth's landscape, such as mountains, coasts, islands, hills, caves, waterfalls, and more. Today we'll be talking about a specific feature that is an important part of Indonesia's geographical features, volcanoes. Which geographical feature will we explore today? Volcanoes. Volcanoes in Indonesia. Indonesia has more volcanoes than any other country in the world, with a total of about 400 volcanoes. Out of the roughly 400 volcanoes, 150 of them are active. This means they might erupt in the future. The most famous volcanoes of the country are Krakatoa, Tambora, and Merapi. The reason that Indonesia has so many volcanoes is because of its geographical location. Indonesia is located in an area where different tectonic plates of the Earth's crust meet. Tectonic plates are pieces of rock that connect together. All of Earth's land and water sit on these plates. When these plates slip or collide into one another, it can lead to the formation of volcanoes and earthquakes. Earthquakes are the shaking and rolling of the Earth's surface. This can cause a lot of damage. Interview an adult. Ask an adult around you if they have ever experienced an earthquake here in New York City. How did they describe the experience? The Ring of Fire. 
The Ring of Fire is an area along the edges of the Pacific Ocean. This area is frequently hit by earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The Ring of Fire has 452 volcanoes along it. It is home to more than 50% of the world's active and dormant volcanoes. There are three different kinds of volcanoes, active, dormant, and extinct. An active volcano is one who has recently erupted and will likely erupt again soon. A dormant volcano is considered to be a sleeping volcano. It has not erupted for a long time. However, there's a chance that it may erupt in the future. Finally, an extinct volcano is one which has erupted thousands of years ago and will not erupt again. Here you can see that the Ring of Fire affects many countries and continents, and it's along North America as well. Look up a map of the United States and compare it to this image. Which states may be affected by volcanoes? The largest eruption. The largest volcanic eruption ever recorded in Indonesia happened in 1815 on the Indonesian island of Sumbawa. The volcano is called Mount Tambora, and it is still an active volcano today. Can you believe it? Almost 206 years later. It was estimated that more than 70,000 people died because of the eruption. Another massive or humongous eruption occurred in 1883 when a volcano on the island of Krakatoa erupted. The eruption was so strong that a large part of the island was actually blown away. Nearly 337,000 people lost their lives as a result of the blast. Did you know that on January 27, 2021, Mount Merapi erupted in Indonesia? The Merapi volcano, located in the central region of the Indonesian island of Java, expelled rivers of incandescent lava on Tuesday night, January 5, 2021, and registered an increase in its activity that has raised the alert of local authorities. The eruption, accompanied by small earthquakes lasting more than two minutes, caused at least 23 avalanches along the slope of the mountain last night, the National Geological Agency said in a statement on Wednesday, January 6. The activity of the volcano, which is located about 400 kilometers southwest of Jakarta, began to increase since last Thursday, according to the records published by the entity, which indicates that Merapi would have entered a phase of volcanic eruption. Hanak Umara, director of the National Geology Agency, asked the population settled in the vicinity of the volcano to remain vigilant against the increasing activity of the volcano and has established a security perimeter of 5 kilometers in radius around it. Merapi, 2,968 meters high, is located on the border between the special region of Yogyakarta and the province of central Java and is the most active volcano in the Asian country and one of the most active in the world. Its last major eruption, which occurred in 2010, killed 347 people and forced the evacuation of nearly 400,000, including 3,000 families who had to be permanently relocated. The Indonesian archipelago sits within the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, an area of great seismic and volcanic activity that is shaken by thousands of tremors a year, most of them small, and in which there are 127 active volcanoes. During volcanic eruptions, hot lava streams down and eventually becomes rock. As we learned earlier, Indonesians have experienced a lot of volcanic eruptions. In today's activity, you'll be able to model how the shape of a volcano changes over time by creating kinetic sand. You can use the sand that you create to mold a volcano. As an extra challenge, if you're an experienced slime maker, you can make some orange or yellow colored slime to reflect the hot lava that emerges from a volcano. DIY Kinetic Sand Ingredients 2 and a half cups of fine sand 1 and a half cups of cornstarch a half a cup of oil You can use canola oil, baby oil, or olive oil Tools 
You'll need a measuring spoon, a glass casserole dish, or a deep baking pan. Don't forget to get your family involved. Here are the instructions to making a great batch of kinetic sand. Step one, mix the sand and cornstarch together completely. Step two, add oil and mix well. Step three, when there are no oily spots and no dry spots, the kinetic sand is ready. Enjoy. Let's go over our recap checklist. We review geographical features, landforms, and ecosystems. We use context clues to define key vocabulary words. We explored Indonesian volcanoes through text and other media. We gathered the ingredients and materials for kinetic sand and created our own interpretation at home. We took a retrospective look at our experience today by completing this checklist. We'd love to see your creations. Send your pictures, videos, reels, or TikToks of your kinetic sand making experience to our Instagram. Show off what you made. Be sure to tag us at Loose Gravel Travel. Thank you so much for watching another episode of our show, Loose Gravel, here on BronxNet. See you next time as we continue to explore different countries and their cultures. that you've been gaining so much knowledge from our time together. What was the most important takeaway from that previous lesson? Make sense and persevere. Hello, grade three students. Welcome, my name is Miss Brady. Today, you will learn how to persevere when solving multi-step word problems. Here's your learning targets. I can make sense of problems and persevere if I get stuck. I can solve multi-step word problems. I can also be precise in my work. Here is the vocabulary, persevere. What does that mean? To keep going even when something is difficult. Never give up. Here's my chart that I'm gonna to refer to. This is what good problem solvers do. They ask themselves these questions. What do I need to find? What do I know? What's my plan for solving the problem? What else can I try if I get stuck? How can I check that my solution makes sense? Essential question. How can you make sense of a problem and persevere in solving it? Here's the first problem. Let me show you how. Two girls and two boys went to the festival. The total cost of their tickets was $20. Each child paid the same amount for a ticket. What was the cost of each ticket? Solve this problem any way you choose. Excellent. Let's go over to the Jamboard and use the Jamboard to solve this. So let's read the problem again. Two girls and two boys went to the festival. The total cost of their tickets was $20. Each child paid the same amount for a ticket. What was the cost of each ticket? All right, so let me get my pen and we'll get started. Okay, so let's use the chart. What do I need to find out? I need to find out what the cost of each ticket was, each ticket. 
what do I know? Well, I know there's two girls and two boys, and I know that the total cost is $20, and I know that each child paid the same. All right, so what's my plan for solving the problem? All right, well, I have to add the two girls and the two boys to find the total for them. And then I'm gonna use that total to figure out how much each child paid. Okay, so let's do that. And I think that's gonna be equal sharing since I have to figure out how much each child paid. All right, so step one. Let's add the children. So two girls plus two boys equals four children. That's an I. And then step two is going to be to divide. But if I don't know how to divide and I get stuck, I think what I'll do is relate division back to multiplication and use Fact families. So let's see how that goes. I know there's four children, so that's part of my fact family. I know there's $20, and I need to figure out how much each child paid. So I am going to go down to four times table, okay? So I am going to do that over here. Four plus another four is eight, plus another four is 12 plus another four is 16, plus another four is 20. So how many times did I go down the four times table? One, two, three, four, five. So there goes my missing number for this family. So then I can say four times five equals 20. And now I can take that 20, which is my $20, and divide it, I'm just moving my numbers around, by four to get five dollars each. Okay, so each child paid five dollars each. I know my answer is reasonable because it answers the question of how much each child paid and I used a reasonable strategy of division to equally share the twenty dollars by the four students. All right, let's go back over here and continue on. Okay, so what did we learn? You learn to persevere in solving multi-step word problems by reading the problem and looking for key information and hidden questions, deciding on a plan, asking yourself what steps you will take to solve it, selecting a strategy, Asking yourself, how will you solve it? Does it make sense? Identifying different ways to get the answer. Asking yourself, what can I do if I get stuck? And you know your reasonable, your answer is reasonable if it connects back to what the problem is. Let's go to a second problem. You guys can keep practicing. So this one we'll do together. You can kind of guide me along. I might not hear you, but I know you're learning. All right, so this one is 12 friends went camping. All except four of them went on a hike. The hikers carried 32 water bottles. Each hiker carried the same number of water bottles. How many water bottles did each hiker carry? Tell what you know, then explain what you need to find first to solve the problem. And then step two is tell which operations you will use and solve. And then our friend here is telling us that if you are stuck, you can persevere. Think, does the strategy I'm using make sense? Well, let's see you guys, let's practice. Okay, here's one, same problem, let's read it again. So 12 friends went camping, all except four of them went on a hike. The hikers carried 32 water bottles. Each hiker carried the same number of water bottles. How many water bottles did each hiker carry? Tell what you know, then explain what you need to find the first, what you need to find first to solve the problem. Well, what I know is that there's 12 friends, okay, and all except four went on the hike, 
and they carried 32 water bottles. So I think what I need to do is have two steps to this problem. Step one and step two. Step one is I'm gonna have to figure out how many friends actually went on this trip, on this hiking trip. So there's 12 friends minus the four who did not go. So that leaves me with eight hikers. That's okay. All right, and then I'm gonna use that number just like we did before with our fact family. So 32 water bottles, eight friends. How many did each carry? I'm gonna use that eight and I'm going to do my multiples. So eight plus another eight is 16, plus another eight is 24, plus another eight is 32, ding, ding, ding. So eight times one is eight, eight times two is 16, eight times three is 24, eight times four is 32. So tell which operation I will use. Well, of course, I used subtraction and I used um, fact families, right? But now, yes, I use subtraction, but what am I gonna do with this fact family? I can relate it back to multiplication first. So four times eight equals 32 water bottles, right? Four hikers, four bottles each rather, times eight hikers equals 32 water bottles. Now I'm gonna use that 32 water bottles divided by our eight hikers, and we know that they carried four bottles each. Okay, and I know my answer is correct because it answers this question here. How many water bottles did each hiker carry? Okay, very good. Let's go back. Now it's your turn, I think. Let's look and see. Okay, now it's your turn. Let's read this one together. There are five players on a basketball team. In a game, four players scored six points each. The team scored a total of 34 points. How many points did the other player score? Tell how to make sense of the problem. Tell the quantities you know, then explain what you need to find first to solve the problem, and tell which operations you will use. All right, I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to think about it. Hmm, ready? Okay, you should be following along. Let's go, last one. All right, so there are five players on a basketball team, you guys, and in the game, four players scored six points each. The team scored a total of 34 points. How many points did the other player score? Well, tell how to make sense of the problem. Let's do that. Well, I know that the team scored 34 points in all. I know that there's five players on the team, but I know that four scored six points. So four times six to get that first number. And then I think what I wanna do is use my answer to then figure out what that last player scored on his own, all right? So I'm going to tell the quantities I know again. Five players on the team, four players scored six points each, and the team scored 30 point points in all. All right, now I'm ready to tell which operations. I think the operation that I am going to use to answer the question of how many points did each the last player score is I have to multiply first, like I said. So step one is multiply. Step two might be hmm, subtraction. This is different. All right, so let's see. 
four, oops, hold on you guys. So four players, right, scored six points each. So 4.6, four times six equals 24 points, right? That's for the four players. Now I'm going to take that 24 and subtract it from the 34. Okay, so 34, 24 equals 10 points for the other layer. Okay, and I know my answer is reasonable because it connects back to what the question is asking. Guys, I hope you learned and I hope that you were able to persevere. Thank you for tuning in to another learning experience with Bronx Edulution. I had a great time with you today. See you next time. Bronx Edulution. We are Bronx Strong.